Singapore's largest industrial district cooling system is up and running. Located at global semiconductor SD Microelectronics Angmokyo facility, it's expected to reduce carbon emissions, equivalent to removing about 110,000 cars off the road yearly. It's also the semiconductor's first deployment of district cooling across its manufacturing sites worldwide, thus contributing to Singapore's sustainability goals. Nasha Rahim with more. Some rooms in this facility needs to be at temperatures below 10 degrees Celsius to keep equipment cool, and that takes up a lot of energy. But the district cooling system takes care of that, serving five buildings. It pumps out cool water at two temperatures, 5 degrees Celsius and 12 degrees Celsius, through separate pipes. The result? Consumption of about 20% less electricity. The plan was uh, very well executed over the past three years amid uh, existing construction, uh, uh, existing uh, operation buildings. I think that goes to show it is really possible, uh, even in the, in the existing uh, building, in order to retrofit to become a centralized uh, uh, district cooling system supply. This is definitely uh, evidence that every semiconductor should start to look at this uh, centralized system in order to contribute su sustainably uh, to the environment. Apart from cost savings, more space will be freed up at rooftops, for example. Without these big chillers behind me, the firm frees up 4,000 square metres of space. They can use it to install other equipment that can help them go green. They're looking at machines that burn away greenhouse gas and turn it into water. This prevents the pollutant from being emitted into the environment and from destroying the ozone. The government says it will continue to support decarbonisation and energy efficient efforts through various schemes that help both multinational corporations and small and medium enterprises. In fact, companies should also consider not just deploy district cooling system for cooling needs, but also consider integrating them with other sustainable energy solutions, such as integrating it with solar energy, EV charging or even smart metering. The semiconductor will upgrade the cooling system at its Topayo site come December. So just how does a district cooling system work exactly? What is its impact and why is it important for Singapore? Nasher him again with the answers. District cooling systems are centralised energy systems that improve energy efficiency and lower operational costs. These helped Singapore achieve its target of net zero emissions by 2050. Water is chilled to the designated temperature by a centralised plant. It is then supplied through pipes to the buildings within a district to meet the requirements. Instead of each building having its own chillers, the system reaps economies of scale. A big part of our energy usage in Singapore today is related to the cooling of uh, built up of the built-up environment. And this built-up environment is made up of not just buildings that are going to continue to exist, but also the commercial industrial segment, which is in, in its construct a big user of energy and cooling-related energy in particular. And this is where we want to focus our efforts when we build district cooling facilities. Such systems are already deployed at the Marina Bay Network, the world's largest underground system serving the area since 2006. Another major system is in Tampines, a large-scale retrofit system across existing buildings. A future possible site is the two adjacent hospitals in Jurong.